Hey everyone, hello there. It's Wednesday. What's up Wednesday with Dr. Jen. Thanks for uh, being here with me today. Um, I have an exciting segment, I think, um, calling it What's That Cough? Um, mainly because coughing is one of the most common um, symptoms or ailments that I see kids with, um, especially during the winter time. Um, and I'm just gonna wait a little longer um, for people to come because last week we actually talked about the flu and got a great response, lots of questions. Um, and a lot of people um, asking uh, questions, but also watching. So I'll just wait a few minutes for more people to join today. Um, as I said, we spoke about the flu last week, and before that, we actually talked about upper respiratory infections like colds, which are very common in kids. Kids get between eight to 10 colds a year, um, mostly in the winter, so they're always coughing. Um, so those are two types of coughs that we spoke about, but there are many other kind of uh, coughs. So today I'm gonna speak specifically on the most common um, coughs and what you need to know about them, what you can do to help um, when it's an emergency, how long they may last, and just give you information to help reassure you as a parent um, to know uh, what to do to help care for your child so you aren't so stressed as well too. And I know because it's so hard when your child is sick um, that you just want to help them and have them feel better um, and want to do everything in your power uh, just to give a lot of TLC so they will uh, feel healthy and strong as soon as possible. So welcome again, I'm Dr. Jen. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an assistant clinical professor of pediatrics at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine here in New York City, and I've been in private practice for over 20 years now, taking care of thousands and thousands of children, as well as parents. I'm really giving them the information they need uh, based on science and evidence, and giving them lots of tips um, that I've learned along uh, the way, also for caring for my children as well, too. I really don't tell you things that I don't do with my children as well, too, because I know as a mom, I want to give you uh, real information that you can use, not to make you feel overwhelmed, but really what you can do to help your child when they're sick and also know when it's an emergency and when you really need uh, care from a pediatrician um, or other uh healthcare professional as well too. So as I said, today it's gonna to be really all about coughing. Um, and one of the probably the most common things um, that I hear from parents is that they're concerned, so I'm gonna discuss these things today, that their child is coughing and it's just been coughing for a long time. They don't really feel that miserable, but their cough has been uh, lingering for a long time. And the other thing that parents get concerned about is they say, um, that they can feel it, it's rattling, or the chest doesn't seem right to them. So all those things, it's important to make um, a trip to see your pediatrician. Those are really important. Um, when I speak to people on the phone, you really can't diagnose um, symptoms of a cough or the really the lung exam over the phone. Um, sometimes I'm surprised when I, when I have a child in front of me and I examine them. Um, so sometimes that rattling is actually just a lot of mucus. And that's really what it's most of the time is it's like post-nasal drip or a lot of congestion that may be in their throat. Um, and it seems like it's coming from their chest. But unless you're listening with a stethoscope um, and knowing the difference that to parents often, um, it sounds a lot worse than it really is. So again, if, excuse me, if you're ever unsure, so important um, to bring your child to see their pediatrician. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna talk about one of the most common uh, coughs that I hear that has a um, specific sound called croup. And croup is pretty common, um, most likely in kids between the ages of six months to three years of age. And um, usually what you hear is this barking cough. So parents either say that child sounds like a seal or they sound like a barking dog. Um, and that is pretty uh, classic for croup. And um, usually the barking cough, um, it doesn't really bother them. Um, it just is like a very noisy kind of dry cough. It seems to be more at night. A child might have um, a cold, a congestion, and then in the middle of the night start like having wake up and having this barking cough. And normally what you can do if they're having this barky cough um, is to uh, try steam from the shower or humidifier, um, fluids. Sometimes that helps as well too. Croup is most often caused by a virus, and this is going to be sort of a theme today. You're going to see that many of these coughs that kids get are caused by viruses. And the most common um, virus that croup is caused by is called parainfluenza virus. Now it's not the flu, it's not influenza, it's parainfluenza, it's a different virus. Um, and this virus actually, it seems like this inflammation on the um, vocal cords, and that's why you get that sort of barky sound. But 
what can be a bit more dangerous is something called strider that occurs when um, a child has uh, croup as well. And not every child gets strider, but strider is even more inflammation uh, right near the vocal cords, and so it's when that air is trying to pass through. Um, they make this sound like, uh, 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 and you see their neck moving in, uh, uh, and it's really because they're trying to breathe, and they, it's really hard because um, there's a lot of inflammation on the vocal cords, and it's very scary for parents. Um, that is actually um, more important. Your pediatrician probably will ask you um, if they're making that noise and uh, if they seem to be in distress. So the first thing you want to do is try to keep your child as calm as possible. Um, when they get agitated or they're upset or they're crying, um, that, that strider is going to occur even more. So you want to keep them calm. If they want something to drink, this is the time they want to watch TV or a video. You want to get them as calm as possible. Keep them upright. Sometimes laying down makes it worse, too. Um, and again, you can try the steam in the shower. Sometimes cold air or cold mist um, helps as well, too. So um, opening the window or bringing them outside in the cold air can be helpful, too. But if your child is in distress, it's the middle of the night, um, it's often it's important to uh, be seen um, either by your physician or in the emergency room because they really need to be evaluated. Um, it's better always to be safe than sorry. I've had patients that they've gotten the cold air, um, because this occurs mostly um, in the winter, we're here in New York, that the cold air, the steam that they do first and the cold air actually helps. And by the time they get to the emergency room, they're better. It's sort of a therapeutic car ride to the emergency room. That's okay. Um, that's great that um, the uh, cool air or the steam um, really helps, and it's good to be evaluated. But oftentimes, it is much more severe. Um, and if they're continuing to have strider, they may need uh, steroids. So that may be um, liquid medicine. It could be a shot that they get. Um, it will help to decrease that inflammation um, so it's easier to breathe. And sometimes when it's really, really severe, they may need a breathing treatment. Um, what we use is called racemic epi. And it's epinephrine, again, it helps to open up the airway and make it easier to breathe. If they do have one of those treatments, though, they need to be watched in the emergency room or maybe severe enough that they need to be admitted and observed overnight. But oftentimes, as I said, most kids get croup. You can get it more than once. It's usually just that barky cough with a cold as well, too, um, and not usually something to worry about. Um, but you need to know those signs to look out for when it is an emergency. But otherwise, steam is very helpful. Again, keeping your child elevated at night. So if they're older um, and they're in a bed, lots of pillows um, can really be helpful. Um, holding them upright more can really be helpful too. Um, but again, any concerns is always important to uh, see and speak with your pediatrician as well. So another very common um, cough that occurs in kids is from a virus um, that gives you bronchiolitis. Now, bronchiolitis is an infection that occurs in the lower airway, the small bronchioles in your chest, um, and that can actually cause wheezing. And in fact, most kids um, before age two have gotten bronchiolitis. The most common cause of bronchiolitis is a virus called RSV, or respiratory syncytial virus, but we call it RSV for short. Um, and again, there are other viruses that can actually cause bronchiolitis too, but that's the most common one. And again, um, as I've been saying, many, many kids, um, and most kids get it by the time that they are two, but the symptoms may just be more like a cold, but it does have um, that it may affect the lower airways too and cause wheezing. Um, so what you need to look out for um, with any child is if they're breathing quickly, um, if their nasal, their nose is flaring in and out, that means they're trying to bring in air. If they're, if they're breathing very fast, um, obviously they look blue at all, a little dusky around the mouth. Um, if they are wheezing, that you think that, that you hear wheezing. Um, and you have to be really careful because in preemies it can be very severe, as well as young children. Young children under age three months also, they can have spells of apnea, which means they stop, uh, like a pause, they stop breathing for a minute. It's going to be very serious. So again, any young child who's having any difficulty breathing um, or eating because they're having um, congestion or coughing um, definitely should be seen by the pediatrician because we really need to have some supportive care and see what needs to be done and what's the source. So if your child um, is breathing fast or has um, a cough and may be wheezing um, and you're unsure, um, when you bring them to the pediatrician's office, they may do an RSV test and that is a nasal swab that goes in your nose and you can test right away to see if it's RSV. 
And again, it may be more important for the young children to know if it's RSV or not. Um, really for RSV, the care is very supportive. So um, again, steam and mist fluids, making sure that they're uh, taking in enough liquids so they don't become dehydrated. And um, very young children may need to be watched in the hospital due to these uh, potentially apneic episodes. And, um, but for older kids, there's oftentimes we see them in the office and we call them happy weezers. So they, they have never wheezed before, but they're coughing um, and they're drinking and they're playing. But when I listen to their chest, they're wheezing, but they're otherwise well. Um, their oxygen saturations are good. When I test them in the office, their vitals are good. So we just tend to observe them um, at home, speak um, with mom and dad, make sure they understand uh, what to look out for. Again, those things I talked about, either respiratory distress, breathing fast, um, looking like they're tired, irritable, any duskiness or blueness, uh, anything that you're concerned about. And oftentimes, if it's you know, borderline, that they're wheezing but otherwise happy, I may just see them serially in the office for a few days, just making sure that they're okay and that they're well hydrated as well, too. So make sure that you feel confident and secure um, before going home with your child if they're sick and really know what the plan is, when to return and when to call the doctor. I think that's really, really um, very important to really know uh, what to expect what to look out for, and what to do if um, more symptoms do develop. Um, never be shy to call the doctor or to come in again um, because things can change, and we know that. So it's really important to, uh, when your young child is sick, to stay on top of it too. Um, what else? So um, that's really the, the most important things to know. Obviously, if a child has uh, bronchiolitis and they're more sick, it, it depends um, on, on the physician and what else is going on. Um, really, steroids um, in young kids have really not been shown to, to help that much. Um, sometimes they are needed. And same thing for what we call um, albuterol or medicines that help with um, opening up the airways. In really young children, especially under the age of one, um, the, these inhalers don't really work that well or the nebulizer. But often, if there's a strong family history of asthma, um, doctors may try it to see if it does help. But if they're otherwise happy, uh, really just supportive care and making sure they have good follow-up to make sure that they're getting better. But it's, it's important to know, I think, for parents, if a child has RSV or they have bronchiolitis, um, the reason being is that that cough can linger for a long time. So even though that your child is better, um, they're happy, um, parents get nervous because they still have that cough, but the cough from RSV lasts a long time. And that's something that I'm always important uh, to tell parents so that they don't worry that even when their child is better, it may be a few weeks until that cough really goes away. So that's important to know too. Um, so that is uh, pretty much bronchiolitis. Um, what else do I want to tell you today? Um, we can also talk about um, pneumonia. So parents are always concerned that their child has pneumonia, and obviously pneumonia is much more serious than upper respiratory infection or a cold. But pneumonias do occur, but they not occur um, as frequently. They can be viral, um, but they also can be bacterial. And I have to say that, you know, being in practice now for almost two, well, actually more than two decades, um, pneumococcal pneumonia, we've seen a drastic decrease in pneumococcal pneumonia over the past 10 years. And that's because of the pneumococcal vaccine. Um, it helps uh, children not only um, prevent uh, pneumococcal meningitis and sepsis, but it also helps to prevent uh, pneumococcal ear infections as well as pneumonia too. So that's really great news that we're seeing such a decrease, um, especially I see it in my practice and the hospital as well too, uh, due to the vaccine. Same thing with H. influenza is also a bacteria that we don't see pneumonia as much anymore or epiglottitis, which also can be a severe breathing disorder, again, because of that vaccine. So we really are seeing uh, tremendous uh, leaps and strides even now um, due to some of the vaccines. Um, that really can help these uh, childhood diseases. Um, but, go, but talking a little more about pneumonia. So pneumonia um, is, again, as I said, something that parents get um, concerned with their child. It doesn't usually happen right away. Often, again, it can occur after the child's sick or has a cold for a while. Um, and it's really a finding of the lower respiratory tract. So oftentimes, it's something that you have to listen with a stethoscope, and you'll hear different changes. So as a pediatrician, I'll hear something called crackles or rails, and something that you won't know as a parent, you won't uh, be able to detect just uh, listening or looking at your child. So it's important if your child um, is, has persistent high fever for a few days, um, is breathing fast, or is saying that they have chest pain, 
Um, they're just not acting right. They're really coughing um, a lot. It's important to have them uh, checked fully from head to toe, especially a good uh, lung exam as well too, to see. Um, because often if they do have a pneumonia, then they may need, if it's bacterial, um, they may need an antibiotic. And depending on the um, history of the disease, as well as um, the exam that your pediatrician um, has, it may or may not be necessary to get an x-ray on your child. Um, again, it may just be um, advantageous if the pediatrician thinks they have pneumonia to treat them and to follow them. Again, they not necessarily always need to be hospitalized. It may be something that they can give um, either a shot in the office or a liquid medicine. It just depends, but I guess the important thing to know is that most illnesses aren't pneumonia. Um, they're more either um, viral infections or other, other uh, cough ailments that we already spoke about. But if you're concerned your child's not getting better, if they spike a fever in the middle of an illness um, and their coughing is more or harder, um, it's seeming like they're having uh, difficulty breathing at all, always, always check in with your pediatrician um, to see if um, your child does have pneumonia or not. Um, asthma. So cough actually can be a symptom of asthma. Not everyone who has asthma wheezes. Actually, the first signs of asthma may just be coughing, maybe coughing, coughing for a few days um, before even wheezing occurs. So wheezing can be a later sign of asthma. Um, and children um, can often get coughing at nighttime. And a nighttime cough, one of those things that us doctors have in our heads is that is it asthma? So a real good history needs to be taken um, by your pediatrician, um, family history as well too. But oftentimes um, <coughs> wheezing um, and coughing go together, or if a child may just have um, a nighttime cough that's asthma. So again, I'm not going to talk about it all now, but you need to have um, if your child does have asthma. Um, and has wheezing and has intermittent coughing, um, they'll use, there's different medicines to use. Um, the, the one is the um, medicine like an albuterol that opens up the airways. Um, it's called a rescue medicine because that's actually given when a child um, is already having symptoms. But if your child is getting um, asthma or intermittent wheezing or seems to get it um, from different triggers, which you would have to um, figure out what they are, um, having upper respiratory inf infections or being sick or often causes of asthma or triggers, um, cold weather maybe, exercise, allergies. Um, kids also who have, as I said, um, seasonal allergies or food allergies as well as eczema, a skin condition, also have um, more likely to have asthma as well too. Um, many kids actually do outgrow asthma, but it's important to control it well um, when you're in childhood as well. So it's important to speak with your doctor um, and we again try to prevent it and prevent the triggers from occurring and hopefully the um, episodes become less and less and not so severe. Um, so it's important um, to talk about um, asthma if your child has a persistent cough that's not going away um, and your child and your physician will do more tests, but asthma definitely um, is something that can cause uh, coughing with or without wheezing as well too. I think that's important to know. Um, sinusitis, I just want to bring that up because um, sinusitis is an infection of the sinuses, inflammation of the sinuses, and sometimes it's, it's just a persistent cough for weeks and weeks. It usually starts out um, with like an upper respiratory infection, um, with lots of thick mucus. Um, one thing that I want to stress about sinusitis that's important is you don't get sinusitis after a day or two. It's usually after, um, you know, we diagnose if, if you've had a lot of thick mucus, that's been at least two weeks or so, so 14 days of, of thick mucus. You may have um, facial pain, headache, the child may speak, uh, excuse me, spike a fever, way through, irritable, not feeding well. So it's usually um, something of more um, along the lines of, you know, not after a day or two. Some people come in saying, I want antibiotics um, right away. And it's, you know, just a cold. As I said, kids can get colds back to back. Colds and viruses can last, you know, seven to 10 days. So um, it's often good to really try to wait it out, do the supportive measures. And if necessary, yes, to get an antibiotic. But we don't want to use antibiotics unnecessarily. We do want to use them when it's needed, but we don't want it unnecessarily because it can cause resistance. Um, you don't want your child to be on it. can have lots of symptoms. You can have allergies to it as well as it can affect your microbiome as well too. So I wanted to bring that up though, though, that a chronic cough um, can be a sign of sinusitis as well, especially in children. Um, but 
I think it's important to know also that your sinuses are young or formative. And children actually don't even have fully formed sinuses before they're one. So it's a pretty rare event for a child under the age of one to have sinusitis. You may not know that, but I want to give you that little uh, fact or pearl of information. Um, whooping cough. So whooping cough is um, really important because we are seeing more and more whooping cough. Um, whooping cough is pertussis. And worldwide, um, there's still, um, I think it's about two, let me see exactly, 24 million cases still worldwide. So that's crazy. And we're definitely seeing um, whooping cough or pertussis in the United States here. Um, oftentimes, I see it in teenagers. And it's also caused from a bacteria. And usually, uh, at the beginning, it just seems, you know, it usually takes a few weeks sometimes to even be diagnosed. Um, it may just seem like a cough or a cold, and then all of a sudden the cough gets worse, and it's coughing, coughing, coughing. Um, the child may wake up in the middle of the night, sort of this impending doom that their chest really hurts, um, and then to get air, they have that uh, inspiratory whooping sound. Um, and if you never heard it, you know what? I probably would go online and take a look. You can you can hear what whooping cough sounds like, but it's scary. Um, and then. Often teenagers are coughing so much they can't catch their breath, they end up vomiting. And then they go through these periods um, and they're just not getting better. And oftentimes that they may have um, whooping cough, which um, can be treated. We treat whooping cough um, with an antibiotic. Um, and mainly um, what it does is hopefully by giving the antibiotic, it helps to decrease the spread because it is very contagious. And um, obviously people who are at highest risk are um, older adults but also young children, especially young newborns. Um, for many reasons, we really need to keep those young newborns um, protected. So uh, moms that are pregnant out there, it's important to get um, your whooping cough vaccine while you're pregnant. Not only will it protect you, um, but also then it will give some antibodies to the baby, um, to the unborn baby, and when the baby's born, we'll still have some um, immunity until two months when the baby starts to get their rounds of vaccines, which include um, the vaccine for whooping cough. And it's really important because um, young babies um, can be really uh, sick when they get whooping cough. They can actually have periods of, of apnea when they stop breathing, and it's very serious. Many babies, um, newborns who have uh, whooping cough, need to be hospitalized to be observed, to be um, to wash and to be cared for. And unfortunately, deaths due to whooping cough occur and they occur um, at higher rates um, in very young children as well too. So it's important to um, not only um, get your vaccine when you're pregnant, but also all those around you. So right, anyone else in the household, contacts, um, moms, dads, grandparents, anyone who's caretaking for the baby, so important. And we really want to protect that baby when they're very young. Um, and again, a, a young baby may not even have symptoms right away of whooping cough, that's a cough. It may just be poor feeding, um, they may um, have temperature instability, they may um, not look right, dusky, they may have these uh, period of acne when they stop breathing. So it's so important to protect the new baby from whooping cough um, by staying up to date, vaccinated, and every time you're pregnant, um, it's important, uh, mamas out there, to really make sure that you do get your whooping cough vaccine. So um, I hope that was helpful, you guys, today, talking about cough and the most common uh, causes that I see for cough. Um, I think it's important uh, just to sum up a few things that um, kids, after they have a cold, they can be coughing for a long period of time. So don't get too concerned if they're otherwise happy and running around. But I think it's, if it's been longer than a week, it may be a good idea after that cold to just check to make sure nothing else is brewing. And I think it's important to know, yes, go to your pediatrician, be seen. But don't expect that the answer is going to be because your child's sick, they need an antibiotic. It's much more important to have a correct diagnosis, to know that they may just need a lot of TLC, hugs and kisses. Obviously, um, as I talked about, steam can be very helpful. Um, it helps to um, open up the airway and passageways. Um, lots of liquids can help with the postnasal drip and getting rid of some of that mucus um, that gets stuck behind the throat. For kids older than age one, honey is great. Um, that really helps to calm and soothe uh, the cough receptors and has been shown to really help coughs. For kids under one, corn syrup actually has been shown to be effective as well, too. Um, kids over the age of six, there are cold and cough preparations out there. I have to say, you know, not only do we worry about young kids because it can be um, not effective, but 
uh, not safe as well too. But older kids, you know, these over-the-counter cough and cold medicines really aren't that effective. In fact, I think it's important for you to know that cough is protective. Cough is helping to get that mucus out. So we want to do that. We want uh, to use saline in the nose to suction it out, um, to get the mucus out so your child uh, feels a lot better, get lots and lots of rest. Um, and again, if your child, though, is getting worse and you're having respiratory distress, breathing fast, um, they have any chest pain, they're really irritable or cranky, um, you always want to check in with your pediatrician because they may have something else going on. So I hope this was so helpful for you, all you guys out there listening to me. If anything about coughs, colds, um, respiratory ailments you have questions on, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I will answer them, get them, um, get back to you as soon as I can. And again, if you want more information, go to my website, drjen.com. There you can see all about pediatrician in your pocket, my new uh, video parenting guidebook. It has all the information you want to know about caring for your child from newborn through age two, talking about keeping them healthy, what to do when they're sick, um, all these respiratory ailments and more, developmental issues. I talk about sleep and peeing and pooping and everything that you need to know so you have that information right at your fingertips. So uh, check it out. Just go to drjen.com and you can find out more about getting uh, your hands on pediatrician in your pocket. So I look forward to uh, seeing and speaking with everyone next week on What's Up Wednesday. I hope you all have a great day.